Hey, Fredonia Hill, this is Hunter Hampton coming at you this week with uh, our Sunday School lesson. Uh, and this week we're going to talk about distractions. I've been, I've been thinking about uh, it a lot, and we've just got so many distractions in our world today. And I think one of the biggest ones, at least for me, is your phone, right? Your phone is constantly there. There are so many things that you can do on your phone, and it really is um, just such a distraction from so many different things. And one of the things I was thinking about this week as I was thinking about the lesson was the weekly report that my phone gives me, and it interestingly gives it to me on Sunday morning, that tells me how many hours that week I spent every day on average on my phone, and then it gives me a percentage up or down from the previous week. And it's interesting that based on kind of my percentage up or down to just kind of the the joy or the shame that I often feel from that report, uh, if I've done well that week and I've spent less time on my phone or if it was a bad week and I spent more time on my phone. I also find it always a little odd that my phone is trying to reward me for spending less time on my phone. But that's a whole different uh, story. And so with all of the distractions, and again, for me, with my phone specifically, it really kind of got me to thinking this week about this lesson as we as we talk about the story of Jesus uh, walking on water, where we have this kind of story of um, a miracle of faith, of uh distractions of failure, uh, but then ultimately of redemption. And so uh, let's go ahead and dive into the text. So our text for this week uh, comes out of Matthew 14, uh, and we're going to start with verses 22 through 24. It says, immediately he, Jesus, made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by, the, but by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. I have a friend who loves uh, this part of the story and these little tidbits that we get kind of throughout Jesus' ministry uh, of him being alone, and it is a, it's a constant pattern that we see throughout, um, you know, Jesus' ministry here on earth. That that he he takes these moments of rest. He takes these moments uh, away to step back to recharge. Um, you know, today we would call these things maybe like a sabbatical um, or even a mental health break, and Jesus would, you know, take these often throughout his ministry as a time to recharge, to spend time with God, and then to go back out uh, into uh, his active uh, ministry. And I think this is, a, this is an important part of the story, and I'm glad that we're kind of stopping and pausing here and reflecting on it, because I think it's something that, that American Christians, me included, need to hear. Our culture kind of constantly feeds us this kind of go, 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 go uh, mindset. And I think it often bleeds uh, into our faith that we must always be going, we must always be doing, and, and that we get kind of caught up in this rat race mentality that when we look at Jesus, we see his life was not... Uh, that and as his followers trying to emulate his life, he constantly took these again steps back, time uh, away to to rest, to spend time with God, to then go out and re-engage um, the world. And though our culture may tell us that this is selfish or that this is a waste, Jesus didn't see it that way. Jesus saw this um, as essential, mostly because he did it over. Um, and over and over again. And so uh, as we see Jesus, you know, at the start of this, sending uh, the disciples away, him kind of going alone, spending time with God and really recharging, uh, I want you and your groups to talk about for a second uh, of where you could use some rest or time away to restore yourself and to spend time with God.
All right, on to the second section, verses 25 uh, through 41. We'll pick up the story uh, with the boat kind of wandering out into uh, the waves. Verse 25, And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? In this story here, we, we see Jesus' divinity. We see a really miraculous uh, moment in his ministry as he, as he performs this miracle to walk on water uh, and really is something kind of a, kind of a prime story in uh, the gospel um, message. But we also immediately see a massive uh, distraction take place in Peter, and I think of all the of all the disciples, I think Peter is the one um, who just really makes the most sense to me. I don't know. He, I, I feel like um, for for some good and probably a lot of the bad that that he um, that I kind of understand kind of the, his reaction, and this is a great example of this. Um, here, Jesus had performed miracles in front of Peter before this. In this moment, he sees um, Jesus walking to him. And in this moment, Peter has a massive uh, step forward in faith. He, he puts his faith out there and immediately is there. And in this miracle, he is participating in it right there, face to face with Jesus. He is walking on water. And even in that moment, right, in that moment where Peter is there in the midst of this miracle, he begins to have doubts. He, get, he gets distracted. He starts looking at what's going on. And because of that, uh, he begins to sink. And I think for me in my life, that, that's often how um, I feel like my faith and my faith walk can go is that things can be going great. I feel uh, like I'm progressing in some way or another. And then even in the midst of those good times, um, I take a step back. In, in the midst of, uh, you know, seeing God provide for me constantly, I can uh, have doubts. I also think that, you know, it's kind of unfair to Thomas that he's the only one that's known as uh, the doubter, right? I think, I think Peter... Um, Peter definitely doubted too, but at that at that point, you know, even despite this, right, despite his doubt, Jesus doesn't say you're done and let him drown, right? Could that's easily an option. He he didn't leave him there, right? He reached out uh, his hand and saved him, right? And he says, "Why do you doubt?" Um, and even in his doubts, right, even in our doubts. Jesus doesn't leave. Jesus doesn't uh, abandon us, uh, but reaches out his hand uh, to save us, even in the midst of our distractions. So for you and uh, your group, I think uh, it would be good or I encourage you to take a minute uh, and to just kind of discuss a question. What are some things in your life that distract you from God, what, where do you see this kind of story fitting in with your life? All right, on to the final section of the story where we uh, kind of see the payoff, see the, the point of the story, which is incredibly re rich and the pinnacle of it uh, in verses 32 through 36. It says, when they got into the boat, the wind ceased and those in the boat worshiped him saying, 
Truly you are the Son of God. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret. After the people of that place recognized him, they sent word throughout the region and brought all who were sick to him and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. And so in this, we, we see the story again kind of come together in Jesus' ministry, pick um, back up. Uh, and it's important, I think, that we see in that doubt, again, Jesus doesn't leave Peter. He picks him up. He brings him back into the boat uh, with the other disciples. And in that moment, the winds cease, right? Peace is there. And, and I think uh, in their response to that, we just see, again, the, the entire kind of culmination of this story. They come before him and they say, truly, you are the son of God and began to worship him. And so in this moment of seeing and witnessing and experiencing that, even through their doubts, even through, you know, Peter's failure in that kind of game time moment, despite that, Jesus still uh, delivers him and brings him uh, back. And I think it's important to, to kind of, as we, as we try to put ourselves in those shoes, um, the deliverance is good, but it's not easy. Peter began to sink, right? His life in that moment uh, was in the balance, uh, but Jesus still brought him uh, through it and brought the disciples uh, through in that time. We also see in the, in the kind of last few verses here, once they uh, can travel across the sea to the other land, uh, that Jesus, again, transitions from this time of rest and restoration back into action. He, he picks up his uh, healing ministry, and for that, people come and begin uh, to flock to him. His name is spread throughout the land and they come and they just say, if we could just touch the fringe of your coat, right? They don't want to put it on. They don't need a hug. They don't need this massive experience, right? Just kind of touching the very fringes of it is all that they ask. And they knew even in that they would be healed and they uh, were. And in that we see people again in this kind of restoration and healing that Jesus brings uh, it attracting people, again, from all across this region to him. And so in our kind of final question here, I'd like for you uh, to just kind of share with the group, how have you experienced the power of Jesus so that you can share his good news with others? All right, I hope you all have a great week, and we'll see you soon.